Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Today we're going over my top 30 wide receiver rankings for week number one of the fantasy football season. If you guys are new to this channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And of course, at the end, if you enjoy the content, drop a thumbs up. We're going to start it off hot here in S tier with Tyreek Hill going up against the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, last season, Tyreek averaged 75.5 receiving yards without Tua on the field and healthy. And with him on the field, it was 108.3 yards per game. So that's a massive difference right off the bat. Tua is fully healthy, as we all know. Now, I also like the matchup of these two high-scoring offenses. I could easily see this game turning into a shootout between the two teams. Now, Tyreek played the Chargers last season in week number 14, was relatively inefficient in terms of catches per target, but he still managed to put up 24.1 PPR fantasy points. And that's what's great about having a guy like Tyreek Hill on your fantasy football team. He only needs those one or two massive plays to make the week worth it, all right? And you're, you're gonna be starting this guy every single week regardless. If he really wants to break that 2,000 yard mark that he's been talking about all off season, it all starts with game number one, and I believe in him. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have him at number one on this list today. Number two on our list today, also in S tier, is gonna be Jamar Chase. Now, this is a divisional game. He's going up against the Cleveland Browns. Divisional games usually turn me off a little bit because the teams usually know how to play each other a bit better than you know non-divisional opponents, but this one doesn't scare me off at all. Jamar Chase is an elite level talent and he's got Joe Burrow fully healthy. I hope, we hope, all right? This combo is deadly when each of these guys are fully healthy. Last season, Chase dropped 28.5 PPR fantasy points in the one game he was healthy against the Cleveland Browns. Now I do have to say T Higgins was not playing in that matchup. T Higgins is now fully healthy and they'll both be playing against Cleveland in week number one. So I don't know if he's going to drop 28.5 points, but Jamar Chase is a must start every single week, especially in week number one here against Cleveland as well. Number three here, this might be a little bit of a surprise that he's way down, at, way down. All right. He's way down at number three, Justin Jefferson against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Out of these uh, three players that we listed in S tier, I think Jefferson has the worst matchup. That's why he's at number three, but it's Justin Jefferson. All right. He, you probably drafted him first overall in your fantasy drafts. Uh, most people might look at this matchup and say, well, listen, buddy, the Buccaneers are terrible, so I don't know what you're talking about, but the Bucs passing defense wasn't the problem last year. It was clearly their offensive struggles that was keeping their defense on the field for the majority of games. They were actually top 10 in passing yards allowed last season to opposing teams. Also, the Vikings might boat race the Bucs in this matchup, so if that happens, they could lean on the run a little bit more than normal. Not saying I wouldn't start Jefferson by any means. I'm just telling you guys why he's behind Jamar Chase and Tyreek Hill. Obviously a must start in S tier. Now dropping it down a tier here, we have Devontae Adams in A tier going up against the Denver Broncos. Now this is the first game that we're going to get to see how strong the connection is between Jimmy G and Devontae Adams. Now it's not a wonderful matchup here seeing as Denver ranked top 10 in total yards given up in 2022, but that didn't seem to matter to Adams last season. All right, in week four, when he played Denver, he put up 19.5 PPR fantasy points. And then in week 11, he broke out with 33.1 PPR fantasy points. Now, just because Devontae Adams is 30 years old now, I am not counting this guy out. A lot of people this offseason, you know, he's fallen very far down draft boards into that late second round. That's ridiculous for this guy, in my opinion. That's all based on Jimmy G. I don't think people are really counting out his ability to be a top five wide receiver. It's more of a quarterback opinion right there, but I still believe in Adams. I think he can overcome this situation and finish top five, at least in week number one right here. Up next on our list at number five, we have CD Lamb. Now I'm really a fan of CD Lamb heading into this season. I think he has the potential to take yet another step up this year. Now we're starting it off facing the Giants and CD Lamb averaged 96.5 yards per game against the Giants when he played them last season. Now the Giants don't have a bad defense whatsoever, but I don't think they're going to be able to contain CeeDee Lamb all night long. Also, the Cowboys just went out this offseason and grabbed Brandon Cooks, which was a sneaky little underrated pickup to, uh, you know, play the opposite side of the field as CeeDee Lamb. I think he opens up the field a bit more and CeeDee Lamb can go crazy this year and in week number one against the Giants. Now number six on this list, we have Amon Ra St. Brown playing on Thursday night against the Kansas City Chiefs. I think this is a nice little first matchup for him, no matter how this plays out. Either the Chiefs could go up early in this game and it's going to benefit Amon Ra because they're going to be playing catch up and have to throw the ball a lot, or this could be a close shootout. All right, I think there's going to be a lot of points scored in this game no matter what, so there's going to be a ton of targets to go around. 
And if you had any doubts about his ankle injury, by the way, that's fully cleared up. He's off the injury report as of Monday, so he should be fully good to go by Thursday night. All right, number seven on our list today, we have Garrett Wilson, also an A tier. He's going against the Buffalo Bills. Last season against Buffalo, he was pretty consistent, averaging 15.9 PPR fantasy points per game. And neither of those games, he even eclipsed 10 targets. All right, obviously, he got a massive QB upgrade over the offseason, going from Zach Wilson to Aaron Rodgers. And everybody in their mother is talking about this year two breakout for Garrett Wilson. All right, I fully support it, but I need to see it in this first game. We need to see it early. I want to see him targeted early and often because he's going to play a crucial role in them having a chance to keep up with Buffalo's uh, insanely good offense. Now, at number eight here, not even rank, we're not even going to rank this guy, but I am going to put him in A tier. I'm going to put Cooper Cup right here. I don't know if he's going to play. I'm not really expecting him to play. But I wanted to include him on this list just in case he was cleared for week one. All right, he's playing the Seattle Seahawks. Now, this video should be released on Tuesday at some point, And I believe the Rams said that we're going to know more information by Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. So if Cup is off the injury report by Sunday and he plays, this is where I'd have him somewhere mixed in with A tier. But personally, like I said, I'm not expecting him to play. Now, the Rams aren't going to rush him back, especially after having a setback to that hamstring injury that can linger on for long periods of time, as we've seen in the past with other players. Now, if he plays, I also wouldn't be expecting him to get the, you know, I wouldn't be expecting full force Cooper Cup that we know and love catching 15 passes, 150 yards. That's just probably not going to happen in week number one. But I can't put him too low on this list just because he has such high potential. If he does get out there and play, you know, you never know with Cooper Cup. I'm not counting him out, but I got to sit him uh, low A tier here. But we're not going to rank him uh, on this list in terms of numbers. So at number eight here, we're going to move on to B tier. We have Jalen Waddle going against the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, Waddle had a pretty quiet game last season against the Chargers, but I wouldn't expect that to continue in week number one this season. Now, like I said earlier, we're talking about Tyreek Hill. I think this is going to be a shootout, all right? There's a lot of points to go around. Tua is going to be slinging the rock to both of these guys. And also another thing, I know they have Mostert starting at their running back position, but behind him, they are very shallow at the position, all right? So they might be more inclined to pass early on in the season while Achain is out and Jeff Wilson Jr. Last season with 1,356 total yards for Jalen Waddell, he's looking to start off very strong in week number one, and I think this is the Perfect matchup to do it. Also, by the way, I think Hill and Waddle are the best one-two combo of wide receivers in the entire league with Jamar and T. Higgins maybe close behind and also A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. But moving on to number nine here, we have Stefan Diggs against the New York Jets. I might be a little low on Diggs here, but you know this is a tough matchup against the Jets with a solid defense. Probably going to be going up against Sauce Gardner for most of the game. In 2022, Diggs was quite contained by the Jets. I'm not going to lie. He put up 14.3 PPR fantasy points in week number nine. And then in week 14, he ended up putting up 6.7 PPR fantasy points. That is not good for Stefan Diggs. All right. I still got to have him in the top 10 almost every single week, though, just because of the raw talent that he provides and breakout potential any given week. He's also on one of the top scoring offenses in the NFL. So if I was, uh, you know, downplaying the Bills potential to run up the score on anybody here in week number one, that would not be a wise decision by me. Number 10 here might be a little bit of a shocker. I have him pretty high. I really believe in this guy this year, especially in week number one. Chris Alave going against the Tennessee Titans. All right. He's above AJ Brown. He's above DK Metcalf. It might be a little risky, but I believe in him. All right. Tennessee was the worst defense against the pass in 2022 averaging over 270 plus yards per game given up all right on the opposite side of the ball the run defense was no joke they rank number one in rushing yards given up per game which is why i think the saints are going to have to lean heavy on the pass in this matchup i also expect Alave to take a major jump in this second year breakout campaign right here once again starting with week number one against tennessee a great matchup now we're going to drop it down to C tier here. We have uh, A.J. Brown against the New England Patriots. All right, tough matchup here against Belichick's defense. All right, he knows how to stop people. He knows how to stop the main threats on the defensive end. But I don't think it's anything that the Eagles won't figure out how to handle throughout the course of this game. I don't expect this to be a blowout by any means as well. You know, the Eagles were boat racing a lot of teams last year. I don't think it's going to be the same. They have a much 
harder schedule this season. Now, the Pats also just drafted Christian Gonzalez and still have Jalen Mills at cornerback. So I'd expect one of those guys to be on AJ Brown, the other to be on Devontae Smith. You also can't deny the chemistry that has been built with AJ Brown and Jalen Hurts throughout the offseason. And I wouldn't be surprised if they find the end zone in this one still. That's why he's ranked at number 11. Moving down to number 12 here, still in the same tier, we have DK Metcalf against the Los Angeles Rams. Now, we need to see that bounce back season right here from DK Metcalf, starting with week number one here. Now, they got a very easy matchup in the Rams, and my only concern in this game is that Seattle dominates this game from the very jump, and they rely heavily on the rushing attack. That's why DK is not higher up on this list. Also, like we were talking about earlier, if the Rams do not have Cooper Cup in this week one matchup. Where's the challenge? All right, where is the challenge? Who is scoring the points? Who's catching the passes here? From Matt Stafford. It's going to be tough. That's all I'm going to say. Now, I do still think DK Metcalf is the best wide receiver on this Seattle Seahawks team. Tyler Lockett's a great option as well. And also, they just got JSN, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, who looks to be in line to play week one. Uh, we should find out more information on Wednesday's injury report if he's fully cleared to go after that wrist injury. But DK Metcalf, I like him at number 12 here in week number one. Number 13, here we have Devontae Smith, also going against the New England Patriots. Now, I did debate putting him right next to A.J. Brown, honestly, but that felt a little bit disrespectful to D.K. Metcalf uh, with his, you know, pretty easy matchup against the Rams there. Now, Devontae Smith played great last year in games that were close towards the end of the season when Dallas Goddard was out. I expect this matchup to be close. Obviously, Dallas Goddard is going to be back in the lineup. I don't think it takes away from Smith too much. I think he took a big jump last season. I think he takes an even bigger jump this season. Now, I wouldn't be surprised throughout the year at all if Devontae Smith ends up outscoring A.J. Brown multiple weeks. This one right here, I know I have him ranked lower, but it could be a game where he outscores A.J. Brown. We'll have to see. All right, number 14, we have Calvin Ridley going up against the Indianapolis Colts. Now, we're finally getting to see Ridley's first game back in action. I'm not really too concerned about, you know, how many targets he's going to get or anything like that. And I'm really high on the Jaguars as a team overall this season. Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, Christian Kerr, Calvin Ridley, and Evan Ingram. Love all those guys. Now, my main concern here is more about the Jags potentially dominating this whole game. There was a game last season. All right, the first time they played against the Colts where the Jags won 24 to 0. Second time was a little bit different and they ended up losing, but I'm leaning more towards a Jags win and domination in this first game. I could be wrong, but Richardson is in his first game. All right, he might struggle. He might be a little bit flustered in game number 1 of his career if they can't get anything going early. Also, no JT. All right, this is kind of set up for disaster in their first game, but Ridley you know, I still got to have him over there in C tier. Moving on one tier down to D tier, we have Debo Samuel going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I wouldn't say I'm overjoyed with this matchup by any means, but I could definitely see it being worse. The Steelers were pretty mediocre last season against the pass, at least. Now, there's actually been a lot of negative talk throughout the offseason about Debo Samuel, you know, how he's like falling off pretty much. I don't know if I fully am buying into that, you know, narrative. I still think there's a lot left in the tank for Debo. He just has to figure some things out. But I do hope it gives him that chip on his shoulder to succeed in this season and play like his, his old self. He has more explosive upside than the guys that I'm putting later on in this list. So that is why he is up here at number 15 against the Steelers. Number 16, great matchup here for Chris Godwin against the Minnesota Vikings. All right, either one of two things is could probably happen in this matchup the vikings dominate this game from the very beginning or it's close and either way either situation i don't see the vikings getting blown out by any means either situation that i just mentioned is good for godwin all right because he should be a beneficiary he was the ppr machine last season for tom brady he's the safety blanket he's been the safety blanket for tampa bay for a couple of years now minnesota also gave up the second most passing yards in 2022 so I'm feeling good about Godwin at number 16 here. Number 17, we have Keenan Allen against the Miami Dolphins. Now, Keenan Allen is probably one of the most safe options in fantasy football week after week as long as he is healthy. He is Justin Herbert's number one option on this team. I don't care if they added Quinton Johnston. Mike Williams is not that number one guy just yet. He might be later on in his uh, career when Keenan leaves. 
LA, but as of right now, I don't see it happening. And last but not least, like we talked about earlier, I expect a lot of points to be put up. So hopefully Keenan Allen can uh, garner around 10 to 12 targets in this matchup to find the end zone for you. Number 18, we have Mike Evans going up against the Minnesota Vikings as well, you know, on the same team as Chris Godwin here. I think the matchup is great, obviously. Godwin is a bit safer of an option. That's why I have Evans ranked below him because, you know, Godwin's going to get more targets while Evans is the one that is going to be going for the deep balls. If he gets open for a long touchdown in this matchup, fantasy owners are going to be very happy about it. And like I said earlier, in a situation where Minnesota dominates from the very beginning, the Bucs are going to have to throw the ball a lot. So I can see Evans getting around 10 targets, 10 to 12 targets as well in this matchup. Now we're going to drop it down one more tier here to E. We have Amari Cooper going up against the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, the reason we have Cooper so far down on this list is, first of all, it's not the best matchup in the world by any means. This is really a feeler game as well uh, in terms of Watson's first game of the season, how much he's improved since last season. Uh, the story of last year was that when the Browns were at home in week number eight, Amari Cooper played extremely well, finishing with 22.1 PPR fantasy points. But then if we fast forward a little bit into week 14, when they were the away team in that matchup, he only scored 6.2 PPR fantasy points. Now, in week number one of the 2023 season, the Browns are actually the home team, which gives me a little bit more confidence in Amari Cooper in this matchup. That's why I have him at number 19. At number 20 here, we have Christian Watson in a good matchup against the Chicago Bears. Now, Jordan Love's, this is going to be Jordan Love's first game at quarterback. Okay, how is he going to perform? Nobody knows yet. We'll have to see what progresses in this matchup. I'm not too worried about Christian Watson's abilities as a receiver, as a route runner, the ability to catch the ball. I just need to see consistent targets because last season, his touchdown percentage was way too high. It's not maintainable. His touchdown per target percentage was way too high. All right, this year, are the Bears going to finally be able to beat the Packers or are the Packers going to run the Bears out of town? You know, like they always have in the past. We'll have to see. Uh, Christian Watson right now, though, the first game, he's probably going to move up my rankings later on in the year, I would have to assume. So number 20 in the first week might be a little low. Number 21, here we have Tyler Lockett going up against the Los Angeles Rams. Earlier on, we talked about DK Metcalf being the clear still number one option in Seattle. Listen, Tyler Lockett is still a great option and he's slept on almost every single year in fantasy football. Week number one here against the Rams, like I talked about earlier with the DK Metcalf thing, if the Rams can stay in this game, it'll be great for both of these guys. If the Rams can't hang with the Seattle Seahawks, ah, there's not much potential here to be had, uh, especially in the second half of that game. Number 22 here, we have DeAndre Hopkins against the New Orleans Saints. Now, the main question here is how many targets is Hopkins going to get, in my opinion? That's the only thing I'm thinking about. All right, seven out of the nine weeks last season after he came back from that suspension, he commanded double-digit targets, which is exactly what he needs this season to be fantasy-relevant week after week. Interestingly enough as well, the game that he came back from that suspension in week seven of last year was against the Saints, and he scored 20.3 PPR fantasy points. Is that going to be a sign of things to come this season, or is he going to drop a dud week one? We'll have to hope for the, uh, the first option. All right, we're going to move it down one more tier here to F tier. Number 23, we have DJ Moore going up against the Green Bay Packers. Now, I'm really excited to see what Moore can do with fields this year. I think there's going to be a lot of huge plays, but some dud weeks are going to be sprinkled in. Three out of five years in the league so far, he's eclipsed 1,000 receiving yards, and I would expect him to make it four in this upcoming season. Now, this is another situation where I would like to see the targets sit around double-digit targets every single week, but it's the Bears. All right, they threw the ball the least amount last season, so who knows exactly what to expect here. That's why I have to have him at a safe number 23 here in week number one. Number 24 might be a little bit of a shocker if you haven't watched my videos in the recent days, but if you have, you'll probably know I'm very high on Jahan Dotson going against the Arizona Cardinals in week number one. I feel like I might still be a little too low on Dotson, but I can't really launch him up past the other number one options on their respective teams that we already talked about. Now, if Terry McLaurin misses week number one with that turf toe injury that I think can linger on, you know, many weeks into the season, I'm very worried about Terry McLaurin. If he doesn't play in week number one, Jahan Dotson needs to be in your lineup, in, in every single lineup, I'm telling you right now. The only bad part about this, and I've said this in the past, you know, earlier on in this list, is if the commanders dominate this game, 
from the beginning to the end and run the ball a lot with Brian Robinson Jr. and Antonio Gibson. Do I see the commanders, you know, blowing the crap out of the Cardinals? Probably not. They're not really a team that's known to do that, but anything could happen. So really high on Jahan Dotson, maybe not high enough though. Number 25, we have Mike Williams going up against the Miami Dolphins. Now I'm very high on Justin Herbert in this first game and the entire year since he's finally healthy. So you think that would turn me on to all his receivers, right? Mm, I'm not too sure about that. All right. Keenan Allen is by far the most consistent guy on this team when it in terms of receivers. Now, the Mike Williams situation for me is very similar to a DJ Moore type of situation where DJ Moore is the number one in Chicago, though, and Mike Williams is the number two in Los Angeles. He's going to have weeks like last season where in weeks two, five, seven, and 14, he put up great numbers, but then he ends up putting up duds in weeks one, six, and 11 last year. So another guy that's very inconsistent, I would love to see the targets level off around that 10 to 12 mark, like I said, and then I could justify putting him higher. But as long as Keenan Allen is garnering a lot of targets in this offense, I just don't see him getting uh, to that target share, personally. Number 26 here, we have Cortland Sutton going against the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, I think this is a very solid matchup here, but I'm not getting blown away by Cortland Sutton. You know, even as the number one wide receiver in Denver right now, he could be used until Judy comes back in after week number six, but are you really that happy about having Cortland Sutton on your fantasy team? I'm not really too sure about that. I think uh, Mims could honestly take that number one role while Judy is gone. That might be a little crazy because he's a rookie, but you know anything could happen. Now, he was in a very similar situation last year in week number four against the Raiders with no Jerry Judy. He ended up putting up 16.2 PPR fantasy points. But if he doesn't catch a touchdown in that game, that ends up being a pretty mediocre 10.2 PBR fantasy point week. You know, just keep your expectations pretty low for Cortland Sutton. Don't think he's going to be some, you know, magical unicorn out there while Jerry Judy's not out there. Number 27, we got a two for one here. I couldn't decide. All right. Deontay Johnson and George Pickens. I had to put them both right here. Like I said, I couldn't decide if I wanted to put these two back to back or in the same spot. So I just put them both at number 27 here. Now, I'm really excited about year two Kenny Pickett and year two George Pickens, of course. Deontay Johnson is a target machine on this offense. He got very unlucky last season, not scoring a single touchdown. That is not going to happen again this year. Wouldn't be surprised even in week number one if they try to force feed him the ball and get him that touchdown that he was lacking last season. And also, they're going to need to pass the ball a lot in week number one to keep up with a high-powered San Francisco offense. I do like both these guys in this matchup. All right, up at number 28, we have Drake London going against the Carolina Panthers. It's not really a matter of the guys above London being more talented or anything to that nature. It's just putting him ahead of these other people in week number one just didn't seem fitting. All right, he could have a sneaky good game. Don't get me wrong. If the defense is planning around stopping Bijan Robinson, because all the attention's on Bijan, all right, they're expecting him to get 20, 25 touches in this first game. So if they're completely game planning about around stopping Bijan in week one, Drake London could score a touchdown. He could get, you know, six, seven catches in week number one and have a good game. But on the opposite side of things, if they do lean heavily on Bijan, you know, get Tyler Algier some carries, then this could be a rough game for Drake London. Throughout this season, we need to see Drake London and Kyle Pitts especially get more targets. These guys are elite level talents. Just get them the ball and they will perform well. Number 29, we have Michael Pittman Jr. going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, I'm not really crazy about Pittman here, but I had to put him on this list because there is definitely potential upside to be had in uh, Richardson's first game. All right, last year in week six, he had his second best game of his fantasy football season against these Jaguars, putting up 26.4 PPR fantasy points. Now, I do have multiple concerns here in this situation. Number one, Anthony Richardson could struggle in his first game and use his legs to compensate way more than he normally would throughout the rest of the season. And number two, Pittman is known to stick right near the line of scrimmage. All right, 10 yards out is about the farthest that this guy goes, and that really limits his upside potential unless he gets, you know, last season when he performed the best, he was sitting around 12 to 16 targets in the games where he scored the most points. So I'm not sure he's going to get that high of a target share in game number one of Richardson's career here. Rounding off our list here at number 30, we have Michael Thomas going against the Tennessee Titans. Listen, 
When Michael Thomas is on the field, he is a very effective player. And this is a great matchup. They're going against the worst ranked passing defense in 2022. As we discussed earlier about Chris Olave, Michael Thomas obviously on the same offense. I'm really rooting for Michael Thomas to play well here. He has a lot of new incentives in his contract that he just updated uh, this season. So I'm hoping he plays well and hoping he stays on the field as much as possible. So that's why I have him at number 30 here. And just some honorable mentions before we head out here. We have Christian Kirk against the Indianapolis Colts. These guys just missed on making the list, by the way. This matchup, like I said, it could be a runaway train for the Jaguars. So I left Kirk off the list, although I do like him as a player. Marquise Brown against the Washington Commanders. Not the biggest fan of really any Cardinals players. You know, I, I'm pretty low on James Conner, pretty low on Marquise Brown, pretty low on the entire offense. So I left him off of the top 30. And last but not least, Sky Moore on the, or in the Thursday night matchup against the Detroit Lions. I think you could see some good action, some good playing time here as the starting slot receiver. They're going to be passing the ball a lot. And I am not opposed to starting anybody on Patrick Mahomes' offense. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a thumbs up. As always, subscribe to the channel if you are new. I will catch you in tomorrow's video. Peace.